tau overflows identity crisis and its nature manobhut ankar chitta ninaham manobhut ankar chitta ninaham nach shrutra jivve nach ghrani tri nach shrutra jivve nach ghrani tri nach vyom bhumir na tejo na vayu nach vyom bhumir na tejo na vayu chidanand rupa shivoham shivoham chidanand rupa shivoham shivoham nach pran sangyo navai panchu vayu nach pran sangyo navai panchu vayu navasat dhatu nava panchu kushah navasat dhatu nava panchu kushah nava ke pani padam na chopast payu nava ke pani padam na chopast payu chidanand rupa shivoham shivoham chidanand rupa shivoham shivoham these are the first two sutras of nirvan shatkam by adi shankar indeed our true self is sat chit anand ever existing ever consciousness ever new bliss generally this true self is covered by bio socio psycho layer it goes in this sequence bio psycho social self and we always attribute to one of them as our real self biological attributions are i am strong it relates to the biology i am strong i am short i am fat i am tall etc psychological attributions contribute the second layer it means i am genius i am dull i am emotional i am rational and the last is social attribution like i am father i am a teacher i am a doctor i am a politician i am a hindu i am a muslim i am a christian and so on and so forth yet there is another identity which is aggregate of all these together and this is most complicated and confusing when these biological bio so psycho and socio they merge into one another to know in a piece we need to move from thinking to being thinking is an aspect of mind between the soul and the mind in a computer there is a software and there is a hardware body is the hardware and all that relates to body and the social this forms the hardware and the software is your consciousness for that we do not for moving from thinking to being for that we do not need to control tame or stop the mind but to understand the mind understand the nature of the hardware is very important its 
operating system, its red, its RAM, and so many things are involved in it. But to understand it and familiarize ourselves with the mind and its nature is essential. Watch your own mind for a few moments. It is like a busy road where traffic is flowing. You can see it is like a conveyor belt that carries ideas, theories, arguments, prejudices, doubts, beliefs, dreams, imagination, identities, aspirations, and the whole gamut of feeling that we consider comprise us. It is and then from joy to despair. In some respects, the mind is like a child. It is always on the go, very restless. And this restlessness is a part of its inquisitiveness. It is very inquisitive, constantly wanting your attention and to be part of whatsoever you are doing. It is said in Kathopanishad, sage Odalak was doing a yajna. He was preparing everything. Najiketa was his five-year-old child. Very curiously, he was watching everything and questioning the father. And he asked, what are you doing this? What are you doing that? Who you are giving these cows? What who, these gifts are meant for who? You are giving your positions, your belongings. Who are you, go, are you going to give me to? Udala got very angry with the question, with the inquisitiveness. Like any other father, we get in angry at the inquisitiveness of the child. We do not respond, we do not respect the inquisitiveness of the child and anybody else. Mind is a child. So he said, I am going to give you to God of death. And he was very happy that he is without knowing that he is who the God of death is, but he was happy that he was being given in given to the God of death. If you are dealing with a very active child as an intelligent parent, you don't need to stop its energy. You understand that it is constantly on the movement and its curiosity are natural, but they cannot be, but they can be channelized into some form of creativity or physical activity, even that is just running around the house. You can do something similar when your mind is on overdrive. Con normally our mind remains always on overdrive. Redirect the energy that fuels the mind rather than trying to suppress the constant stream of thoughts. Redirect the energy to fuel them. The first sutra, Mano Buddha Ahankar Chittani Naham, mind has four aspects, four corners. Mind is one, buddhi, intellect, ahankar, ego sense, and chit. Chit means the storehouse of the memory. The storehouse of the memory. I am neither mind, nor intellect, nor ego sense, nor the storehouse of the memory. Because what is memory? There are organs of perception and organs of action, like hearing. He says, I am neither the ears, nor the tasting, the tongue, nor the smelling nose, 
not seeing eyes. So what is this? These are the instruments or you can say sales representative who are collecting the data. So eyes bring information, ears bring information, tongue brings information, nose brings information, ears, eyes bring information. All these are inf informations are brought to the place, to the lab which is mind, where it is processed based on the past experiences that is a storehouse of the memory. From that, if a smell is there, so you see if an identical smell is there, then you say it smells like that. If it is not, I don't know what it is. You do not have any identification for that. Taste is the same thing. Then he continues to say that in the third line, neither am I the sky, the, the human body is composed of five elements, the sky, the earth, the fire and the air. So I am neither of this. Then you must say that who you are. This is the first layer of identification which is more bio, it relates to the biology. So then he says I am Shiva. Shiva is pure consciousness, unborn, unmanifest, ever existing bliss. Chidananda Rupaha. Chid Anand. That is, Chid means eternal, ever existing. Anand, bliss. Chidananda Rupa. My form is that of a ever existing bliss. Shivoham, Shivoham. I am Shiva, always existing. This is the first sutra that specifies certain attributes which define us and you make these define you. You are identified with the body, the tall, short, fat, thin, so and so forth. In the second he continues to say, Nacha Prana Sangyo Navai Panchvayu. Prana means life force. Life force. And how does the life force come? Through the breath. I am neither the life force. Prana Sangyo. Navai Panchvayu. Panch means five. The five airs that flow into entire the body in different parts of it. Nava Saptadhaturu seven elements that constitute the body nor five koshas that is the when you eat food it is annamay kosh then annamay kosh pranamay kosh vigyanamay kosh so these are the things these are the storehouses annamay kosh the food that you consume goes in a certain place so on and so forth. Na vakya pani padam na chopast payu. Neither am I the vital breath, which is the life force, nor five vital airs that constitute, nor seven ingredients of the body, nor the five sheaths of the body. Neither am I the organ of speech, nor the organ of holding, hand nor the organ of movement, feet, nor excretion. I am pure, ever blissful consciousness. I am Shiva. I am Shiva, ever pure, blissful consciousness. The explanation of each of these, Prana Sangyo, Panchvayu, is a different matter. At this moment, it is important to explain the, the, na the nature of these things that constitute the problem for us. Enough for now. <laughs>